All right. So the song says the Lord loves me and he died on the cross of Calvary to bear my sin and my shame. The Lord loves me. Oh, what a wonder I see. Rainbow shines through my window. The Lord loves me. He died for me on the cross of Calvary. He bore my sin and my shame and he died for me. He rose from the dead, fulfilling each promise he said. And someday, home to my Savior I shall be led. The Lord loves me, oh what a wonder I see. Rainbow shines through my window. The Lord loves me. He died for me. Cross of Calvary. He bore my sin and my shame and he died for me. He rose from the dead, fulfilling each promise he said. And someday, home to my Savior I shall be led. And someday, home to my Savior I shall be led. All right. One more song. Okay. Song that everybody knows, I guess. It's called Mercy is Falling. Feels like sweet spring rain. We're getting summer showers now. So, yes, but it's a joy to have rain. So mercy is falling just like sweet spring rain. So let's receive God's grace. Let's be receiving God's mercy day by day. Mercy is falling, is falling, is falling. Mercy, it falls like a sweet spring rain. Mercy is falling, is falling all over me. Mercy is falling, is falling, is falling. Mercy, it falls like a sweet spring rain. Mercy is falling, is falling all over me. Hey, oh, I receive your mercy. Hey, oh, I receive your grace. Hey, oh, I will dance forever more. Hey, oh, I receive your mercy. Hey, oh, I receive your grace. Hey, yo, I will dance forevermore. Okay, blessing is falling. Blessing is falling, is falling, is fall. Blessing, it falls like a sweet spring rain. Blessing is falling, is falling all over me. Hey, yo. 
I receive your mercy. Hey, yo, I receive your grace. Hey, yo, I will dance forever more. Hey, yo, I receive your mercy. Hey, yo, I receive your grace. Hey, yo, I will dance forever. All right, so let's come to his throne of grace to receive his mercy for today as we study the scriptures. Let's ask Catherine to lead us in prayer. In the Padigan Amen. All right, so let's turn our Bibles to Luke chapter 12. You must be ready. Luke chapter 12, verses 35 to 48. Luke chapter 12, I'll put it in the chat box. Uh, Luke chapter 12 and verses 35 to 48. Oops, sorry, I messed it up big time. Okay, I think you can read it from this. Luke chapter 12 uh, verses. I'm correct. Sometimes some of the keys in my, my laptop don't work. I don't know why. Come on, work, 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 you. Oh, come on, it's not coming. Okay, okay, Luke chapter 12, verses 35 to 48. I'm going to read it in my Bible. You have to follow it in your Bible. Stay dressed for action and keep your lamps burning and be like men who are waiting for their master to come home from the wedding feast so that they may open the door to him at once when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds awake when he comes. Truly, I say to you, he will dress himself for service and have them recline at table <coughs> and <coughs> he will come and serve them. If he comes in the second watch or in the third and finds them awake, blessed are those servants. But know this, that if the master of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have left his house to be broken into. You also must be ready for the son of man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Peter said, Lord, are you telling this parable for us or for all? And the Lord said, who then is the faithful and wise manager whom his master will set over his household to give them their portion of food at the proper time? Blessed is that servant whom his master will find so doing when he comes. Truly, I say to you, he will set him over all his possessions. But if that servant says to himself, my master is delayed in coming and begins to beat the male and female servants and to eat and drink and get drunk. The master of that servant will come on a day when he does not expect him and at an hour he does not know and will cut him in pieces and put him with the unfaithful. And that servant who knew his master's will but did not get ready or act according to his will will receive a severe beating. But the one who did not know and did what deserved a beating will receive a light beating. Everyone to whom much was given, of him much will be required. And from him to whom they entrusted much, they will demand the more. All right. It's a very, very hard passage to teach and to learn. It's a very difficult passage. But then we will try to understand this passage. First of all, <clears throat> Jesus is talking about being alert. <clears throat> because the master has gone somewhere and he's going to come back. So <clears throat> he said, be like those people, be like those men who wait for their master. See? So in the previous passage, Jesus was telling them not to be greedy. In the previous passage, Jesus was telling them not to be anxious. Okay. So you should not be greedy as Jesus' followers and you should not be anxious because you're Jesus' followers. But what should you be doing? They should be putting their focus on the return of Jesus. Jesus has gone up to heaven and he will come back. That's what the angels told us, right? That's what the angels told the disciples. The way he went up, he will come back again. 
And when he comes, he should see that your focus is on his return. See? So most of the people, they think that, okay, Jesus is gone, so he's not going to come back. No. He's saying, uh, you know, gird up, uh, you know, let your waist be girded, which means another uh, the servants, you know, those servants, they get uh, ready for service by tying a um, cloth around their waist. You know? they, 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 because the robe is a loose robe, they tie their waist so that the robe will be under check and they'll be able to do some heavy work. So what it means here is be dressed for service. You, know? you can't go to your school you know, without wearing uniform. They'll ask you like, where is your uniform? I had this friend of mine, you know, who I was working in a technical workshop. So all over, you know, we have machines and uh, we are supposed to wear uh, tight clothes and uh, we, we are not supposed to have our hair long. We're supposed to trim our hair. And sometimes some machines, we are given a cap to wear. You have to wear this, uh, you know, uh, like a shower cap, you know, they'll give you a cap. Uh, the hair should not fall into the machine, you know, and the machine will actually catch hold of the hair. And you can't take it out from the machine. So it's very dangerous. So you should not have long hair. You should not have long, you know, ornaments when you're working the machines. Because if you have a necklace or a chain like that, it will get caught in the machine and you'll be pulled inside the machine. Machine, you know, as it is grinding, it will grind you also. So it's very dangerous. So they tell you, you know, no, nothing which should be loosely hanging should be there. So if you're going into the workshop, you have to be dressed like you want to work in the machine, dressed like how the uniform says, uh, you know, you can't do whatever you want and then go into the workshop. So if a person comes with long hair or, you know, if a girl comes, you know, wearing a, a, a salwar with a shawl and all, the instructor there will say, please remove your shawl. You know, you can't go into the workshop with a shawl because your shawl will get caught in the machine. See? So <clears throat> being dressed to work means you have to maintain your, uh, you have to be ready for service. And one of the ways that uh, the Israeli, uh, the Jewish uh, servants were ready for work is if they're working at night, they have to keep their lamps burning. So let there be a girding, you know, tying of the waist with a cloth that shows you're ready and hold a lamp in your hand saying that, you know, burning lamp, which means you're ready to work even at night. So, so <clears throat> Jesus is actually reminding us that if you're willing to serve God, then you should be ready at all times. See, you have to serve him well. You have to be ready at all times. See? And then Jesus says, <clears throat> uh, like uh, the, the uh, master is to come home from the wedding feast. So he has gone and he's going to come back. And what is he going to see? Something very opposite, like how we saw in the picture. You know? We can't guess. Usually the master comes and all the servants are all ready. They will actually serve the master. But here Jesus says the master will be so happy that the master will make them sit down and he will serve them. Wow. Okay. So what does that mean? It means that a great reward is, uh, you know, to be expected by the servant. If you are found alert and if you are found serving when the master returns, the master is going to reward you in a way that you have not expected, you know, unexpected way. So there is, if you give your life to Jesus to serve him, Jesus is going to reward you greatly. That's what it means. Okay. So, uh, the, the picture at the end will be quite different from what you expected or I expected because the master is going to serve the servant. He's going to reward the servant. So, uh, therefore, you also be ready for the son of man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Okay, What does it mean? It means that <clears throat> if you are unprepared and suddenly if the master comes, see, that is going to be very embarrassing for the servant. You know, uh, I, I remember this um, uh, wedding where we were supposed to attend and the servants were supposed to, you know, keep the place clean and neat. So all of them did that. And they were so tired after the previous night's work that most of these servants, you know, they were sitting in one place and they were talking to each other and they all slept off there. And the masters, you know, they, they came to the, uh, to the house after the wedding. They came to the reception thing and the door was not open because all the servants were sleeping inside. And they had to wait outside and they were knocking on the door. I said, come on, guys, open the door. And all these fellows were sleeping. Then suddenly one guy hearing the banging noise and he got up and he ran to the door, main door and opened it. And all the guests were just looking inside and they saw all the servants waking up from their sleep. It was a very embarrassing moment for the servants. So same way, Jesus is saying the, the ready servants will be rewarded. 
but for the other servants who are not prepared it will be kind of an embarrassment see so what is jesus saying every one of us have to be prepared for his coming for some of them who are not prepared it is going to be embarrassing for those who are prepared it will be a rewarding time okay so it is something that is so important that you have to be ready for it it is something that is so important he also compares it with the story of a thief he says will the thief uh, you know jesus is not saying that he is a thief he is just saying that he is going to come like a thief a thief will never announce he will never call you know your house and he'll say uh, marina today at uh, 12 o'clock i'm planning to raid your house okay uh, no thief will say like that because then you will call the police and tell them uh, sir one thief called and said he is going to come at 12 o'clock so 11 o'clock itself police will come there with the gun and trap and everything and when the uh, when the thief comes you know to th- steal from your house then suddenly he'll be you know like spider man they will jump on him put him in the trap and all say aha nee paranjid munnari vandittu varu nalla dishum dishum all the fights will go on and the fellow will be captured so no thief will inform you well in advance tomorrow evening i am coming or sunday when you go to church i am going to come that means they will not go to church they will sit at home and catch the thief see so a thief comes when you least expect him see so but jesus is also going to come like a thief without giving you any warning without giving you any hint suddenly he'll come which means that we have to be ready at all times okay so our lives should be lived in constant readiness that's what jesus is trying to tell us so be alert because the lord can return at any time and that's one thing that we have to be sure of you know when jesus said this that was 2000 years ago now we are more closer to that day of his coming than the disciples were so 2000 years have passed when you look around all the signs which he said about wars rumors of wars uh, you know uh, uh, drought um, what do you call sicknesses all these things are happening around the world so the signs of his coming are very much there so any day even today as we are speaking today we should be prepared that oh if the lord comes today i should be ready i should be alert if the lord is coming tonight don't say oh jesus don't come today you know come after one week because i have big big plans for my vacation then he'll say okay you stay and enjoy your vacation i am taking all my people and going see so when the lord comes he should see the servant alert otherwise you will be embarrassed now <clears throat> so peter suddenly has a doubt peter said lord are you telling this par- parable only for us see now jesus actually replies and what he means is that the answer is for everybody see all should be faithful all should be like the wise manager see i speak to all that's what jesus says no who then is the faithful and wise manager whom his master will set so anybody can become that faithful person that's what jesus is trying to tell peter if you want you listen to my words and you are alert then you will be that wise man but if you are not if you are unfaithful and if you are foolish you will choose to ignore my warning see so this is like a warning for those people so if you listen to it you are the wise person if you don't you know you can be in the same house two different people like uh, i think uh, joan and joan uh, joel and joanna from the same house no so sometimes uh, joel will be thinking okay i'll be relaxed and joan will be thinking no 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 i'm going to be alert so in the same house one person will be like the wise manager and the other person will be like the foolish manager i'm just giving an example okay so please joan don't think that you know uh, you are better than your brother that does not i did not mean that at all yeah <laughs> okay you got the picture no i can also say the opposite thing right uh, so uh, uh, if the uh, if joan says that you know i can be relaxed and you know uh, not going to come and Joel says that no 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 uh, he is going to come then Joel is the faithful man that's that's all okay i just wanted to make them feel good yeah. all right <laughs> okay so uh peter is saying who is that person jesus says anybody can be that person if you are wise and if you listen to my uh, you know warning then you are that person you can be so anybody can obey this command now <clears throat> again jesus says about a tentative thing what cannot not may may not happen okay if a servant is saying in his heart my sir, my master is delayed in his coming see so uh the servant is saying i can do whatever i want here see master is not going to come because 2000 years jesus has not come no so now why how is he going to come maybe that is that is not going to happen so what will he do 
he mistreats the master's other servants he begins to beat the male and the female servants that would say oh that's a cruel man see as a as the servant of the master as a manager he should not do that so he is he is showing unkindness he is showing wickedness cruelty towards his other colleagues maybe the servants are below him you know in in uh, leadership he is above them and these people are you know, he is a supervisor and the other servants so this man beating them up not good then what is he he also himself eats and drinks which means he gives himself to the pleasures of the world see so he mistreats the other servants he gets involved with pleasures of this world okay this is another sign of a man who is not alert towards god mistreating people getting involved with the pleasures of this world you know, thinking only about how what is my next pleasure what how can i enjoy the world how can i just lose myself and just live on in this world only you know? like how that man the rich fool who was uh, you know having the great harvest also thought so giving himself to excessive pleasures of the world and finally and be drunk to eat and drink and be drunk what does it mean intoxication all kinds of intoxication you know world offers us a lot of intoxicating agents you can have drugs alcohol cigarettes and all those things and entertainment wise also you can have a lot of intoxication you know you can have movies you can have different kinds of movies you can have different trips you can have different kinds of experiences and this is all getting drunk see getting drunk excessive use of all these things you know god has given everything for us to enjoy but when you when you live for that when you get drunk on it which means you can't live without it anymore see that's the kind of thing that you know uh, some people get uh, crazy after cars and they have to have all the cars in the world the best cars in the world they would spend any amount of money to get the all this collection of cars you know? and they don't think about uh, you know the people who are hungry they don't think about poor people they don't think about people who are in need but they only think about how to get the latest car or the latest vehicle so that is being drunk on that so, so intoxication could be both uh, physical actual intoxication or can be material things see you can get intoxicated on the things of the world so he mistreats his master oh, sorry master's other servants he is excessively given to pleasures of the world and he is also given to intoxication <clears throat> okay so he is taking it very cool master is not going to come then he says the master of the servant will come on a day when he is not looking for him see ready or not one day the master will definitely come when he comes what will he do he will punish those who are not ready he will punish those who have denied his coming and he will reward the ready okay so jesus again emphasizing it he says those who are not ready for his coming they will be punished they live their life as they want they will be punished if you are given into the pleasures of the world you will be punished if you are given to intoxication you will be punished but those people who are ready for his return they will be rewarded greatly <coughs> then he speaks about when the master comes what about that person who did not prepare himself or do so according to his will he says there is more beating and less beating okay there is more beating for the man who knew it and still did it less beating for the one who did not know it but still did not do it okay some people are ignorant about this you know those who are uh, not christian they don't know what the bible says so they don't know whether jesus is coming so because of lack of knowledge they also eat and drink they also keep on wasting their lives so jesus says what about them their punishment is going to be less those of us who are studying the bible and learning that jesus is going to come suddenly your punishment will be more than theirs because they did it without knowing you are doing it after knowing it see so if a person is compared you say who is going to be punished more the person who knew it and still did not do the right thing that person is going to be beaten more okay but the person who did not know it and kept on ignorantly doing it they will also be punished but they will be beaten less see so this is a warning for mainly us you know uh, if i did not take this class all of you would have been safe right you would have said oh i didn't know that jesus was coming so you would have been safe but now that everybody knows that jesus is going to come suddenly every one of us are accountable 
no we are responsible how we live our life is very important jesus is going to hold you accountable and he is going to ask you the same question what did manu uncle teach you on 12th may 2022 8:33 pm and you say uh, what did uncle say didn't he tell you that i will come yes yes you told did you live no of a meeting tap tap pata ed bhayanga duty then there are other guys who did not come for this meeting you know they did not come so jesus asked them were you there for that meeting they'll say no did you know that i was coming no okay so less beating you know why because you did not know but beating is definitely there for those who are not ready okay so for those who did not know and still wasted their life for them the beating is less but for those who knew everything the truth about his coming and still did not prepare they will be beaten more more punishment is for them so <clears throat> what did jesus say but the one who did not know and did whatever what deserved a beating will receive a light beating everyone to whom much was given of him much will be required and from him to whom uh, they entrusted much they will demand the more see so it's all about being responsible for what you have received jesus is not an unjust judge you know he is not going to come and uh, ask uh, you know us things that we have not even understood he is not going to come and say table what do you say about uh, theory of relativity and he will say oh, i don't know theory of relativity okay then the question will not be asked on that why because he doesn't know but uh, you know if you ask somebody who knows that then he says i don't know then that person who is responsible who knows that they will be asked more see so according to how much god has given to you that um, that much only god is going to ask you so one who has received more so we are we are especially blessed because we are born in christian families we at, at, attend churches we attend bible clubs we attend tammy clubs we attend yfc meetings we attend you know uh, church um, uh, you know what do you call uh, church meetings and all those prayer meetings and all those things wherever word of god is preached we are there so we have been hearing the word of god again and again and again and god has been speaking to us so we are people who should be more responsible because we have received so much from god so a person who has received more from god god will hold the person more accountable if you have not received much from god if you are not part of any of this and you have not even read the bible that person is comparatively safer why because god is not going to ask him much but the punishment is going to be there for violating god's warnings okay that warning is there for everybody so if you violate the warning god is going to punish you but then that person is comparatively safer because he will not be asked more he will not be punished more so we are in danger because we know more we claim to know more we are people who are you know completely you know in christian families then we have bibles with us how many bibles we have you know i can say there are almost 20 bibles in my house alone you can say oh i have study bible i have english bible malayalam bible telugu bible tamil bible ella undu veetlu and then lord will ask did you read the bible no adi patai patai adi vel sarra sa you had the bible and you did not read it so he will he will not punish the same way a person who does not have the bible you see because he would not have the opportunity to read the bible so uh, if you want those people to be punished make sure you share your bible with those people then they will also be punished just like you and me right no that's not the intention the intention is that if you are given more god will ask you more you are accountable more if you are given less god will not be unjust and ask you more he will only ask according to what you have received so according to what we have received we have to be all the more responsible we cannot run away from our responsibility so expect god to come and if you are a faithful servant expect the unexpected okay he will come and serve you you will be greatly rewarded so it's a motivation for us to live according to what we have heard to live and serve him here on earth till he comes so uh, jesus is telling us to be faithful when he comes be alert let him be fo- let him find you being alert and doing what god has asked you to do that is a faithful servant and when he comes he will surely reward us so this is not to scare people but this is a warning for us to be more faithful to keep, to do more for the lord to serve him more and when he finds us faithful there will be great reward for us when he comes let's pray heavenly father we want to thank you because you have given us so much encouragement to continue being your faithful servant in season and out of season during the day and at night help us so lord to gird our clothes our waist and to light the lamp and be faithfully serving you when you come oh lord that's the that's a 
way that you have to find us. And if you do find us that way, you are going to reward us. Help us not to be like that unfaithful servant who thought that the master is not going to return, who thought that the master has uh, given me enough time to eat and drink and go after the things of the world and be intoxicated and lose myself on it. That's not the way God desires for us. We are called to be responsible as his children, as his servants. Help us, O oh Lord, to be accountable because more will be asked of us and great is our reward. Help us to be accountable. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen.